Hello, my name is Baiyu Li, and I will be talking about our paper on the security of homomorphic encryption on approximate numbers. This is a joint work with my advisor Daniel Michancho. So here is a brief overview of this talk. I will be first talking about passive security model of approximate homomorphic encryptions. I will introduce a new security notion, the indexed security, to formalize passive attackers against approximate homomorphic encryptions. I will compare this new security notion with the classic indexed security. I will then present a passive key recovery attack against the CKKS scheme. This attack is within the CPAD security model. It is both efficient and effective against most of the previous versions of the open source FHE libraries. And I will also be talk briefly talking about countermeasures against this attack. So this attack is about homomorphic encryption, which is a crypto primitive allows you to compute unencrypted data. Essentially, FHE uh, makes this uh, the small diagram commute. FHE can be extremely useful for building privacy-preserving protocols. And over the last several years, we have seen a great progress in improving the efficiency of the FHE schemes. Nowadays, many services are providing their services uh, using the FHE technology. And one of the schemes, the CKKS scheme, has become a very popular and serious candidate in many of these applications. So what is the CKKS scheme? It is a special kind of uh, homomorphic encryption scheme. It is an approximate homomorphic encryption scheme. What this means is that the decryption function on an encryption of X does not retain X exactly, but it rather returns something close to X. The scheme itself is instantiated based on standard AWA encryption, where the raw decryption function computes an inner product between the secret key and the separate text. The result is a noisy encoding of the plain text X. Typically, with the exact FG schemes, you would need to apply an error correction code to extract the plain text X. The CKKS scheme considers this noise as a sort of approximation error. It does not do any error correction, and instead, the CKKS scheme decodes the entire noisy encoding of X into X prime that is only approximately equal to X. In many of the applications, especially with numerical computations, uh, approximate result is sometimes are, are already uh, acceptable. And on the other, uh, on the upper hand, by not doing any error correction, the CKKS scheme becomes very uh, much more efficient compared to the standard the exact HE schemes. The CKKS scheme has been implemented in many of the open source FHE libraries, and it has been used in many of the privacy-preserving machine learning applications. For security, you can show that the CKKS scheme is in the CPA secure based on standard lattice assumptions. The proof is essentially the same as other IWA-based schemes such as BGV, BFV, here, the indexed security is typically considered as the standard security notion for passive security. So, um, at this point, you may uh, we may um, intend to conclude that the CKKS scheme is passively secure, but we want to ask if that's really the case, or maybe uh, the real question is: uh, Is indexed a suitable model to consider for approximate encryptions? Well, to answer that question, let's look at a, form, a homomorphic encryption as a formal object. So formally, homomorphic encryption scheme consists of four algorithms. You can use the k-generation algorithm to generate a set of keys. The party with the public key can, evaluate, uh, can encrypt his message, and another party with, uh, with the evaluation key can homomorphically evaluate her circuit and to get another separate text. Finally, the party, uh, the secret key holders, 
can decrypt the final ciphertext to learn the final computation result. For exact schemes, the very first requirement is uh, that the scheme must be correct. This, is essentially, this essentially requires that the decryption of a homomorphically evaluated ciphertext must return something as if the competition is carried out in clear implant text. For security, we consider passive attackers for FHE schemes. Uh, for example, this, um, this sunglasses guy in this picture. Such attacker can influence legit users on their choices of plain text messages as well as on their choices of homomorphic competitions. This passive attacker can also eavesdrop the communication lines to learn the ciphertexts. And a very important fact is that this passive attacker is also capable of observing the final competition result in plain text. For example, in this picture, our favorite heroes Alice and Bob communicate through this encrypted line. At the end of the communication, Bob decrypts uh, Alice's message, and at, at that point, Bob's behavior may depend on the decryption result. And our uh, and this passive attacker, this sunglasses guy, can observe Bob's behavior to learn the final competition result in in plain text. So this is a very crucial fact that we must consider passive attackers who can observe the final competition result in plain text. For exact schemes, to formalize such uh, passive attacker, we typically end up with the uh, in the CPA security or the indistinguishability on the chosen plain text attack. Such security can be defined by this in the CPA security game and assume everybody is familiar with this classic definition, so I will skip this definition. But what I really want to emphasize is that um, the formulation of in the CPA security does not consider the decryption function. It only concerns about encryption and evaluation function of the scheme. And this is totally okay, because for exact schemes, the adversary already knows the decryption result due to the correctness requirement. But such correctness requirement is not satisfied by approximate encryption schemes. So this brings up a question whether we should incorporate the decryption function into the security definition to capture all the powers of a passive attacker. To do this, uh, we introduce a new security notion, the IndiCPD security, or IndiCP with a special decryption oracle security to formalize these passive attackers against approximate homomorphic encryption schemes. This security is defined by a standard indistinguishability security game where the adversary is given access to three uh, stateful oracles, the encryption oracle, the evaluation oracle, and the special decryption oracle. The encryption oracle is a standard left and right word oracle that takes a pair of messages from the adversary, and the encrypt one of the message depending on a secret, key, secret bit B return the ciphertext to the uh, to the adversary and stores both the plain text uh, plain texts and as well as the ciphertext into the state this evaluation oracle h is also standard it takes a circuit and the sequence of indexes from the adversary it picks the tuples indexed by the indexes in j and homomorphically evaluate the circuits on the ciphertexts indexed by J, return the final ciphertext to the, to the adversary, and stores the plain text competition result in both left and right word as well as the final ciphertext into the state. The decryption oracle is very special. It takes only an index from the adversary. It picks the the tuple corresponding to this index from the state compare the plain text messages in this pair. If these two plain text messages are equal, then this decryption oracle simply decrypts the, the J ciphertext and return the decryption result to the, uh, to the adversary. Otherwise, this decryption oracle just returns an error symbol. Well, this is pretty technical, 
But all this definition wants to do is to formalize a, a, a passive adversary who can um, who, who can encrypt and evaluate um, uh, who can encrypt the messages honestly and who can also evaluate uh, several taxes honestly and who can also uh, access or observe the, uh, the decryption result on honestly generated separate text. So this decryption oracle is very different from the decryption oracle you would typically see um, in active security definitions such as CCA or CCA2 because here this decryption oracle can only decrypt several texts that are honestly generated by the uh, encryption and evaluation oracles. It cannot decrypt the several text arbitrarily chosen by the adversary. So um, this oracle does not give the adversary any, um, any power to mount active attacks. So with this definition, the very first thing we want to do is to a uh, sanity check. We want to make sure that we don't give unnecessary power to the adversary. Well, or formally, we want to uh, we, we we can check we, we can show that for exact uh, homomorphic encryption schemes, uh, this new security definition, the index APD security, is equivalent to the classic index APU security. So we don't really give an, an, any unnecessary power to the adversary. But for approximate schemes, we can show that this index APD security is strictly stronger than the classic index API security. And we will show this by showing a key recovery attack against the approximate schemes the KKS in the CPAD model. Before I go into the details of this key recovery attack, let me summarize the, uh, the theoretical result we, we, we obtained in our paper. We showed that um, for exact schemes, our new security definition, the index APD security, is equivalent to the classic index AP security. This shows that our new definition is a conservative extension of the index AP security. For approximate schemes, we can show that there exists a strict hierarchy of security variants of the index APD security based on the number of decryption queries allowed by the adversary. We can show that the most the, the an unrestricted in the CPAD security is separated from the Q in the CPAD security, where the adversary is allowed to, on, to make only um, a period bounded number of decryption queries. And this separation goes all the way down to the variant in which the adversary is not allowed to make any decryption query or the same as the classic in the CPA security. We also showed that in terms of query orders, the non-adaptive version of the index APAD security is separated from the fully adaptive or unrestricted index APAD security. We also defined a simulation-based CPAD security, and we showed that there also exists a strict hierarchy of simulation-based CPAD security based on the number of decryption queries. You can find the details of uh, all this um, theoretical result in our paper on ePrint. So now let me uh, present our key recovery attack against the CKKS scheme. So the CKKS scheme is based on the, uh, the uh, RIN.WA encryption, and it is typically instantiated with a cyclohomic ring of power of two orders. In CKKS, the secret key is a pair of polynomials. And the cipher text is typically also a pair of polynomials. The raw decryption function in CKKS computes an inner product between the secret key and the cipher text. CKKS applies um, a special encoding scheme based on the canonical embedding of the cyclohomic ring. The encoding function computes the inverse of the canonical embedding, scaled it up, and round it to the nearest integers. The decoding function first scales down a polynomial and applies this canonical embedding to get a complex vector. 
The, in, the full encryption function and the full decryption function is standard as a just a raw a composition of the raw encryption or raw decryption function with the encoding or the decoding function. What's really important here is that uh, um, the decryption function, the raw decryption function, is a linear function in the secret key. And the decoding function is also a linear function. So the full decryption function is, as a composition, is a, a, a linear function in the secret key. So this brings up to the core ideas of our key recover attack. In this attack, we consider a passive attackers who can observe some ciphertexts and who can also observe the decrypted result, decrypted numbers of the ciphertexts. With this information, the, the attacker can first compute, first try to re-encode the decrypted numbers into a polynomial M prime, and then the attacker can just compute the inverse of the full decryption function, and at the end of the, uh, the attack, the, uh, the attacker may have the secret key in the final computation result S prime. Well, this attack looks um, simple and uh, very efficient, but in practice, there are some obstacles. For example, um, in some cases, you may use a pop of two modulus. And in those cases, you don't always have an inverse element for uh, arbitrary uh, polynomial. If that's the case, uh, the attacker can just collect more instances of this separate text and decryption result pairs and apply Gaussian eliminations to, uh, obtain, the separate, uh, to obtain the secret key. And the most serious obstacle is due to um, computation errors because the encoding function is not strictly uh, inverse of the decoding function. And due to floating point errors, uh, you may, uh, the encoding function may, uh, there may be re-encoding errors between the encoding function and the decoding function. Once there, um, if, there ex uh, if, the, if there exists a re-encoding error, then by computing the inverse of the full decryption function, you will not uh, necessarily get the secret key. But if the re-encoding error is not too big, uh, the attacker can just fall back to a lattice attack. All this implies is that the CKKS scheme is not a passively secure scheme in the CPAD model. We implemented our attack against most of the open source FHC libraries. And in our experiment, we chose lattice parameters such that we can obtain at, mo at least 256 bit securities under the classic in the CPA security notion. We tried to homomorphically compute variance of uh, large numbers in order to get more floating point errors. Well, this is to make our attack harder. And also, we try to homomorphically evaluate logistic and exponential functions. And this is to try to produce bigger encryption noises also uh, in order to make our attack harder. In almost all our experiments, we can successfully recover the secret key. And we disclosed this attack to the library teams in October last year. And following that, there has been a very extensive, um, extensive discussions about this attack and, and also uh, mitigations. During this process, more sophisticated attack has been, have been discovered, and some of the heuristic mitigations have been implemented in those libraries. Well, this mitigation is so far only heuristic, so the question is, can we have a provably secure a solution to make the CKKS scheme in the CPAD secure? The answer is yes. We can just add a large Gaussian noise during the decryption. This is typically known as noise floating technique, and it has been used in many areas, for example, the threshold encryption and also the circuit privacy problems of homomorphic encryption. But there, uh, in practice, um, noise floating has a serious drawback because um, it requires to add a large noise. And this, this means that you would need a bigger modulus because typically you probably need uh, to add about 40 bits of noises during decryption. 
And this, as a result, this may require you to use 128-bit integers to do um, the polynomial arithmetic. So there's, uh, by doing this, um, you certainly will save us um, a certain performance penalty. So this brings up some open questions, open problems. The first one is our, uh, whether we can design a more efficient solution to achieve in the CPD security for approximate homomorphic encryption schemes. Maybe it is very hard to achieve the full in the CPD security, but it it seems uh, maybe it's possible to design an um, efficient solution uh, for, an for an approximate homomorphic encryption to achieve a, a limited abundant, a limited notion of in the CPAD security in which the adversary is allowed to only make a bounded number of decryption queries. Another very interesting direction is to show whether we can build efficient uh, schemes for homomorphic approximate competitions. With uh, such um, such scheme um, is to uh, homomorphically evaluate some approximate operations, where this uh, you, you know the approximate operations result in clear text um, deterministically. Uh, so if that's the case, because this operation is deterministic and um, you can just you, know, you can trivially prove in the in the CPA security. As long as the scheme, uh, in, you can trivially prove in the CPA D security as long as the scheme is in the CPA secure. And I say that there, um, there are some recent progress towards such direction, but it looks like we still have, um, still, it is still open problem to build efficient schemes in that direction. So, as a final remark, I want to. Um, to mention that we introduced a, a, a passive attack, passive security model for approximate homomorphic encryption scheme in this talk. We introduced a new security notion, the in the CPD security. And this security notion is equivalent to the classic in the CPA for exact schemes. So it does not give uh, the, the adversary, the attacker, any additional power for exact schemes. But for approximate schemes, um, we can show that this uh, this new security is strictly stronger than the classic in the CPA security, and we show that there there exists a strict hierarchy of uh, variants of in the CPA D security based on the decryption queries. We also presented a key recover attack against the CKKS scheme in this uh, in this CPA D model. This attack itself is very simple and efficient. And some heuristic against this attack, uh, some heuristic countermeasures against this attack have been implemented in the in, in many open source libraries, but it may require a full, some further study to say how much concrete security can be obtained can be achieved through these countermeasures. And we can also um, achieve full body security with. A full body security with with the CKKS scheme, but it's but um, the the efficient solution is still open problem. So this is the end of my talk, and thank you very much for your attention, and you're welcome to check out our paper on ePrint.